go where you kind of addressed the American people. So I'm going to give you a job. I'm going to give you a job of a supreme commander of pandemic response uh, to be able to address uh, the humans of the United States primarily, which is where most of the folks live who will see this video. And you are in a bit of a future state relative to where we are. Um, so talk to us from our possible future and, and tell us what we need to know, uh, what you hope for us and what you want us to do or not do to, to maybe more gracefully enter your future or maybe to sidestep it a little bit if you still think that's possible. So I'm, I'm responsible for the, the, the pandemic response. I get to like make all the decisions. You're, you're responsible for how the people respond. So, so not okay. necessarily industry I'm and science. Okay. Yeah. All right. Everybody stay the fuck home. Don't know if I can swear. I'll do you already did it. So keep going. Uh, no, stay home, stay home, socially isolate. Don't go to the gym. Don't go to restaurants. Don't go have parties. Don't see your friends. Just stay home and give your healthcare providers, your doctors, your hospitals, your nurses, give them the chance to treat the people that are going to get really sick. Uh, I know it's inconvenient. I know it sucks. I know it seems like a lot to ask, but millions of people are going to die if you don't. So if you, going to the gym is more important than the lives of potentially of millions of your fellow Americans then, you know, maybe you need to sit and think about what's important in your life. But it's such a small thing. If I can say one thing, it would be it's such a small ask. It is such an easy ask. And I'm not saying stay home if you have to work or stay home if you, if you have to, if you absolutely have to go out. I'm saying stay home if you can so that the people that have to go out, they're also protected and they're limited in their exposure. And it's not just about high risk. It's not just about the elderly. This is about protecting doctors. It's about protecting businesses. It's about protecting the economy. Because if we don't all do our part now, just look at the data. The only thing that has stopped the spread has been total lockdown. Anything else is just going to slow the roll. And I don't even think it's going to slow it enough to make a difference anymore. Thank you so much. You nailed it. You're our leader now. I totally appreciate that. We're having, I don't know if you've noticed some troubles with our uh, national level leadership. So um, you're a president and just everybody listen to President Rahaf. <laughs> all right. She's, she's data-based. She's science-based. She's not likening this to uh, just uh, a flu as our own leader did. Uh, feels like years ago now, but it was, I think, a week ago. So I, I appreciate that. And then is there anything else that you want to um, address, add, talk about? I can, you know, if not, I can stop the recording and we can just hang. But I think for the purposes of, of an interview, if there's anything else you want to add, here's, here's a moment. Yeah, I mean, as somebody who is living the curve a little bit, a couple of weeks ahead of you guys, just going through this experience, um, I'm going to give you a, just a couple of quick things that have really helped me um one it's real it's a stressful time and it's going to feel scary when the lockdown comes when you suddenly realize everything that's happening it's going to be quite scary so my first tip is to give yourself a bit of a break and don't expect to be as productive or you know on top of everything as you uh, would, would would hope to be i would say take the time to make your home as inviting and comfortable as possible in the sense of like, take care of yourself. Like I have been here the past few days. I haven't even looked at work email. I've been nesting and just making sure that everything's okay because it's quite stressful. The second thing is I would say work through your emotions. I'm feeling like quite a bit of rage these days at people that are not acting in accordance with what, you know, what the severity of, of what they should be doing. And we should process that and talk about it. I feel scared about the future, I feel hopeful, I feel angry, I feel sad, like, just give yourself the space to kind of just process that as we're going through this. And then the third is to think about what you can contribute to your community. There have been during this time, so many good initiatives, we've seen factories repurposed um, to start producing sanitizer gels here, the LVMH uh, factories and the perfume departments here are being repurposed to make hand sanitizers, we're seeing people stepping in and helping other people pay the bills. 
um, in France, in Paris, every night at 8 p.m., everybody goes to their balcony and they they do an applause. They applaud for all the healthcare workers that are on the front line. So if you're standing in Paris and in other cities in France, so like try to be a part of the community. And if you're feeling resistance to anything that I'm saying, that is a very good indication that you might have a little bit of denial. This isn't going to blow over after the quarantine. This isn't going to be a two week, a three week. We are looking at, in all honesty, a 12 to 18 month time horizon of disruption. Now, that could be a time of connection, of ideation, of creativity, of prosperity, of community, or that can be scary, isolating, and, you know, a negative experience. So, like, let's choose which one we want to do, but definitely lengthen your time horizon because this is going to be the next year and a half, almost two years of our lives as we figure out how to maneuver in this new reality. <laughs> I am slow clapping. I just, I want I to, this is me slow clapping. Uh, thank you. That was, that was practical. It was inspirational. It was motivational. It Thank was epidemiological. It was mathematical. <laughs> <laughs> it was all the all the calls, all the ulls. And uh, and I so appreciate you taking the time. I really like the note about um, you know acknowledging your emotional state. And I think you know there's a a trick, a process I learned from a friend, Tricia Wong, to do at the beginning of meetings and like you know sort of work meetings, gatherings of friends, whatever where you do this, it's called a PEM check. So your physical, emotional, and mental state, and you kind of check in with that. So I think for future interviews, I am going to um, offer that to, to the people that I'm speaking with. And I encourage everyone watching to just do it for yourself. If you're with someone else in your home, uh, do that with each other. If you're in a Zoom call with colleagues or enemies, uh, do it with <laughs> with them. I mean, it's probably more interesting with you. First of all, if you're Zooming with your enemies, like, good for you. You know, it's a time of connection. Like nemesis. Yes. Yeah, you never yes. guess what I've done to you. It's like, how are you feeling, man? <laughs> uh, so, so we've been talking with uh, Rahaf Harfouche in the countryside of France, where they are a few weeks ahead of us in time and uh, and response and so we're we're talking to the future this is an interview this is like a time travel interview and uh, i want to thank you so much for giving us that i'm going to end the recording now fyi so you can say the real things you want to say <laughs> <laughs>